Straight ahead on the Daily O, the latest from Poland. Parts of a missile landed on the outskirts of Poland this morning, killing two civilians. The United States now confirming Russia was the one who launched the missile. A massive opioid payout. One of the largest companies in the world was just ordered to pay out billions in its latest lawsuit. We'll tell you the details. But we begin tonight with another tragedy on a college campus. Four students killed as police now call the incident a homicide, now looking for clues to locate a suspect. All this and more coming up. The Daily O starts now. Good evening and welcome to the Thursday edition of The Daily O. I'm Emma Lightfoot. Thank you for joining. We begin tonight's broadcast with gut-wrenching news once again. Afternoon marked the second consecutive evening of college students being pronounced dead on campus, this time at the University of Idaho. The university confirmed that four students have been killed in what's been determined as a homicide. According to police, police were responding to a call for an unconscious person on King Road just south of campus around noon when they found four victims. MDP does not believe there is act an active threat to the community. Classes are canceled at the university today to honor those student victims. The university also shared resources for students and staff who may be impacted by the event. Police are asking if you have any information to call the department. A possible act of war in Poland. This morning, the Polish media reported that blast remnants from a Russian missile has killed two Polish civilians. While it's still unclear of where the projectiles came from, it's under the direct timeline of when Russia launched its massive wave of missile attacks on Ukrainian cities in over the past month. As of right now, there has been no confirmation from the Polish government that the projectiles did indeed come from Russian missiles. We'll continue to keep you updated on the story as details emerge. In other news, the city of Stillwater is sending a final reminder for businesses looking to partake in the Holiday Parade of Lights. The deadline for businesses to participate in the event and submit their entry forms is Thursday, November 17th. This year, the theme for the parade is Christmas Vacation showcasing favorite holiday destinations, while Santa Claus will also be making an appearance at the end of the night. To submit your entry forms, you can deliver them to the Stillwater Community Center off of West 8th Avenue. The parade is set to begin at 7 p.m. on December 1st. Operation Christmas Child is back in full swing this week. The operation has been around for over 30 years, filling shoeboxes with toys, hygiene items, and school supplies for students in need for the holiday season. Throughout the entire week, you can drop off supplies to one of the over 4,500 drop-off sites throughout America. To learn more about where to find the nearest drop-off, visit SamaritanPurse.org for more details. Part one down, three more to go here on The Daily O. When we come back, looking to finally get back to traveling for the holidays? Many more are as well. We'll tell you how many in our national headlines. Also, a glimpse of hope. New, members suggest that the, new numbers suggest that the U.S. economy is looking poised to turn things around. Find out about the significance that that might bring when the Dailyo returns. Pecans are staple to Oklahoma. In fact, many of our native pecans come from trees that are older than Oklahoma statehood. My father's the one that got us started into the pecan picking. I was probably 10 or 12 years old, and we started off with the one little mechanical picker that you pulled behind a four-wheeler. Then we'd go home at night and we'd clean them on a TV tray. I guess uh, watching my dad work hard when we were young, and people started trusting him and getting more and more groves, uh, we just kept growing. Being a, a relatively new and fresh company, we get to sit in the same room with people who have been a part of the Oklahoma economy for decades. It's opened a lot of doors. It's gave us uh, quite a bit of exposure, and I think people, you know, will take a small company like us a little more serious. We're just going to continue growing as long as our community lets us and uh, our customers keep on buying, and we'll see where it takes us. <laughs> Our state is one of the most beautiful and unique states in the USA. With diverse geographies, the historic Route 66, unforgettable restaurants, and some of the greatest people on the planet. With so much to see and so much to do, living in Oklahoma means one of the best vacation spots is right in our own backyard. Doesn't this story need to be told? As filmmakers and photographers based right here in Oklahoma, we thought so. And hey, who doesn't like a good road trip? So, we packed up our cameras, teamed up with Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell and the Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department, and that's how this series was born. 
We want to show you why traveling within the great state of Oklahoma is a great idea. So come join us for thousands of miles over the next year, from Broken Bow to Black Mesa. This is the Oklahoma Road Trip. You may have been to casinos at some point in your life, but do you really know the truth behind the game you're playing? And the casinos were very polemic or very uh, controversial when they came out, but the truth was that's all the federal government gave us. The casino is owned by the Chickasaw Nation and has roughly 600,000 square feet of dedicated gambling space making it the world's largest casino. It contributed massively to the Chickasaw Nation posting a net revenue of $1.4 billion for the fiscal year of 2017. Welcome back into The Daily O. It's time to take a look into your national headlines from throughout the nation. Walmart has agreed to pay $3.1 billion to settle opioid lawsuits in multiple states. That's according to New York Attorney General Letitia James, who co-led the negotiations. The company was accused of failing to regulate opioid prescriptions, which contributed to the opi opioid crisis nationwide. The settlement framework also requires Walmart to increase efforts to prevent fraudulent prescriptions and flag those that seem suspicious. Walmart disputes the allegations, but says the framework is in the best interest of all parties involved. Inflation is affecting a lot more than just gas and grocery store prices these days, especially when it comes to travel destinations for the holidays. Disney World has announced it will soon raise ticket prices for the first time since 2019. Beginning December 8th, there will be park-specific pricing for one-day, one-park tickets. On its busiest days, the Magic Kingdom will be the most expensive of Disney World's four theme parks. Pricing for park hopper tickets, which allow admission to multiple parks on the same day, will vary by date based on demand. In addition, Disney World is increasing the price of most annual passes. For those who are traveling for the holidays, brace yourself for the crowds. 54.6 million people are expected to travel this holiday season, according to AAA. That's up slightly from 2021 and nearly as high as pre-pandemic volumes. Despite inflation and current economic woes, demand for travel doesn't seem to be waning. And with tra COVID travel restrictions now lifted, people are able to gather again. AAA also pointed out that Americans are more comfortable taking public transportation again, including airplanes and trains. A sign of positive news in the fight for curing cancer. According to a new report, survival rates for lung cancer are on the rise in the U.S., but more work remains to be done. The five-year lung cancer survival rate increased from 21% in 2014 to 25% in 2018. In communities of color, the five-year survival rate is much lower, at only 20%. That's according to the 2022 State of Lung Cancer Report, which was published Tuesday by the American Lung Association. In 2021, the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force expanded its screening recommendations for lung cancer. It's now recommended for anyone 50 to 80 who smoked a pack a day for 20 years or two packs a day for 10 years, or anyone who currently smokes or has quit in the past 15 years. A possible end to the economic woes. After an 8% increase over the past year in wholesale prices, those figures have significantly gotten better than original forecasts. The figure is significantly better than forecasts as the producer price index measures prices paid for goods and services before they reach consumers. So the report is considered by some to be a leading indicator of broader inflationary trends and a predictor of what consumers will eventually see at the store level. It's time for a quick break, but when we return, Cowgirl basketball continued their early season dominance. Find out what Coach Hoyt and her squad had to say. Bedlam football is around the corner. Mike Gundy sat down with the media to discuss the game plan. Daily O will be right back. We would design something, it would sit on the counter, and people was either, if enough of them said, you know, this just is, this isn't it, it never made to the line. Dad was excited that they're all original, they were all designed on mom's kitchen table, and it gets in your blood after a while. We're very happy that Pamela and Michael have taken over the business 
and kept the family going. We took the business over in 2017. When we found that it was available, we wanted to keep the legacy of family alive, but it was also incredible products that deserve to be uh, a part of Made in Oklahoma's story. We were a part of Made in Oklahoma years ago, and so it kind of grew as Made in Oklahoma grew. Oklahoma is ingrained into our everything that we did. We've been here most of our life. That's what we entailed our whole business on, was the Oklahoma homegrown feeling. I'm Kristen Hawkins. I went to Oklahoma State University here in Stillwater in 99 to 2004. I've always felt like Stillwater needed more family-friendly things to do, and we have opened up AR Workshop. We do everything from knitting blankets that can be done in a three-hour class, and we create doormats and porch signs. The Christmas wreaths with our yarn that we use for the blankets. We also do, um, we just started a new project for gnomes and we've done pumpkins during the fall. But our big thing that we do here are interior signs. Our designs are extremely unique to our workshop. Customers come in, it's everything is here for them to do. They create everything. They can be as hands-on as they want. They came in here to relax and have fun and that they are proud of their project that they've made. Over the years, we kind of realized that you can get ribs anywhere, you can get a steak anywhere, but you can't always get a Mountain View hot link like ours. So we really decided to focus on that niche and realized we had something really special. So that's when we started focusing more on the hot links, but it's still the same family recipe they were making all those years ago. For us, many of our people that work here have been with us for for years and decades. So whereas machines kind of break down over time, the people just get better. And it shows in the products we produce. When you buy a Mountain View product, not only is it gonna taste dynamite, but you're also feeding Oklahomans. You're helping employ Oklahomans and you're helping to fund the state's economy. So what's better than that? Welcome back to the sports edition of the Daily O. The J.C. Hoyt era for ba Cowgirl basketball has been on a roll so far, as the baskets come aplenty starting off the season on a hot streak. That streak continued last night as the Cowgirl offense torched the Oral Roberts Golden Eagles at gallagher Iba Arena. Our own Karsten Fabian has more. The century mark, a feat that many teams cannot accomplish. But tonight, the Oklahoma State Cowgirls surpassed that 100-point mark defeating the Oral Roberts Golden Eagles 103-66. to The Cowgirls got off to a hot start and continued their dominance throughout the entire game. Claire Chastian, who went 4 for 4 from the three-point line tonight, says that they laid it all on the line and their mentality was to strike first. Um, we just wanted to come out and set the tone. We wanted to punch first. And I think we did a really great job of that. I think our team really, um, we were on the same page and we all had each other's back and we um, really just matched Coach JC's energy. Without star guard Lexi Keys due to an injury, the Cowgirls had to find their source of energy in high paced plays elsewhere. And they did just that, scoring 63 points in the first half and finishing off the half with a 14 point run. Head coach JC Hoyt, despite not having Lexi, says that they have a team first mentality. Next man up, next man up. And we talk daily about all the different weapons that we have and the different gifts that our players have. And you know, when one goes down, uh, we all step up and have each other's back, whatever that looks like. Shooting 52% from the three point line, the Golden Eagles just couldn't play fast enough to keep up with that Cowgirls offense. Not only did the Cowgirls play spectacular on the offensive side, but they also had blocked down defense, causing 22 turnovers with eight steals and three blocks, leading to 31 fast break points. The Cowgirls look to improve their dominant three game win streak this Thursday, November 17th, against the Missouri State Lady Bears in what will be their first road game of the season. Tip off is set for the Cowgirls at 6 p.m. Central Time. Reporting from Gallagher Iba Arena. This is Karsten Fabian, Ocali TV.
Thanks for that, Karsten. While Cowgirl basketball continues their role, Cowboy football looks to be on the right track on, to starting their own winning streak. While the Cowboys got back into the win column against the Iowa State Cyclones, winning 20-14, it's now time to unveil your Week 10 Impact Player of the Week. Devin Bloomer has more. It wins championships, but in this case, it wins conference games. Oklahoma State beats Iowa State 20-14 to on the backs of their defense, which is something that hasn't really been said for this Oklahoma State team this season. Leading the charge for the defense this week was Kendall Daniels, who is this week's impact player. Kendall Daniels made a lot of big plays for the Cowboys, even the load the offense has had to carry this season. Here's what Daniels had to say about the defense in this game. Uh, yeah, uh, Coach Emmer was just saying somebody needs to make a big play. I mean, we haven't had a big play in three weeks, so just to come out here in, in front of our fans just to make plays and just, I mean, that's all we needed just to get a win. And big plays were made. Daniels on the second drive for Iowa State had a huge hit to force a fumble and give his offense the ball back. On the very next drive for Iowa State, he got the first interception of the day for the Cowboys and forced his second turnover of the day all within the first three drives of the game, giving his offense the ball right back once again. Late in the fourth quarter, Daniels had a crucial fourth down stop as he filled the gap and pushed back Iowa State's Hunter Deckers to give his offense great field position and effectively put them in a position to kick a field goal, allowing the Cowboys to go up six points late in the game. Daniels had one of his best games this week and earned Big 12 Newcomer of the Week honors. Here's what Derek Mason had to say about Daniels. Um, I think it probably is his best game to date, but but like what you saw was just, you know, time after time, you know, guys around him, he was consistent, you know, man, he was fitting gaps, you know, the football found him. Um, and, and, and we know he's got great ability, but I think, man, this was a defensive win. A to I mean, I mean, like for those guys, defensive, it was a total defensive performance that we hadn't had all year. The Cowboys look to build off this defensive showing and travel to Norman for Bedlam this week. With a big rivalry game like this one, big plays will need to be made. The Cowboys are still in the race for the Big 12 championship spot if things go their way, but they still need to win out. Reporting from Stillwater, Devin Bloomer for Ocali TV. Thanks, Devin. The Cowboys will be on the road this week for a highly contested Bedlam matchup in Norman against OU. Kickoff for that is set at 6.30 p.m. It's time for one last break on the Daily O, but when we return, history was broken in the NFL on this day. Find out more when we'll go back in the history books in sports history. Also, one athlete is now in disputes with one of his top sponsors. Find out about that and more right here on The Daily O. Our state is one of the most beautiful and unique states in the USA. With diverse geographies, the historic Route 66, unforgettable restaurants, and some of the greatest people on the planet. With so much to see and so much to do, living in Oklahoma means one of the best vacation spots is right in our own backyard. Doesn't this story need to be told? As filmmakers and photographers based right here in Oklahoma, we thought so. And hey, who doesn't like a good road trip? So, we packed up our cameras, teamed up with Lieutenant Governor Matt Pinnell, and the Oklahoma Tourism and Recreation Department, and that's how this series was born. We want to show you why traveling within the great state of Oklahoma is a great idea. So come join us for thousands of miles over the next year, from Broken Bow to Black Mesa. This is the Oklahoma Road Trip. My name is Kayla. I've been here since the beginning, so four years. Scratch is more focused on farm and mostly made in Oklahoma products, keeping it local. Sustainability is our biggest thing. Um, that's one of the reasons why this place opened. I've been the chef here at Scratch for two and a half years. I uh, started here as a line cook. Our food and drinks are a bit separate entities almost inside the restaurant. So the food is now up to 85% of the uh, products we bring in are raised or grown locally. Uh, it's all based off the things that I grew up eating in southern Oklahoma, the things my grandparents ate. I'm about, uh, fresh food, clean food, um, organic food, sustainability, that's all of our thing. From front of house to back of house, we're able to maintain both with freshness. But made in Oklahoma means we get it straight from the farms that are 20, 30 minutes, another little county away. We get it straight from them. 
we use the very best of the best ingredients. Demerara sugar is the best that is. Very high quality fruits, berries. The milk we use is the best milk there is. That's why it makes our product stand by itself. I like to make yogurt because I like to eat yogurt. We've been doing this for ourselves for many years uh, because it's a tradition in our family. And we want to have a product which would be very similar to French yogurt, but uh, with our touch of uniqueness. Linking our name, our product, with the uh, reputation of the uh, Made in Oklahoma Coalition was probably the best thing we have done as far as promoting our product. Welcome back to The Daily O. Before we wrap things up, it's time to catch you up on what happened on this day in sports history. Starting in 2014, when Wisconsin running back Melvin Gordon set the FBS single game rushing record. Gordon ran for 408 yards against the Nebraska Cornhuskers in just three quarters. Gordon accomplished this as well as scoring four rushing touchdowns on only 25 carries in three quarters of play. The previous mark of 406 yards was set by TCU running back Ladanian Tomlinson and had stood as a record since 1999. Gordon gar garnered multiple Player of the Week awards for his performance against the Huskers. The Walter Camp Football Foundation, Athlon Sports, and CBSSports.com named him National Offensive Player of the Week, and the Big Ten named him the Conference Offensive Player of the Week. His record lasted for only a week when Oklahoma's Samaj P. Ryan set the re new record at 427 yards. Moving on to one year later, when Peyton Manning surpassed Brett Favre for the most all-time passing yards in a career. Manning's accomplishment came against the Chiefs after a four-yard reception to running back Ronnie Hillman to give him 71,840 yards. The game itself wasn't good for Manning and the Broncos, as Manning finished the game with four interceptions and only 35 yards in the air, as the Chiefs defeated the Broncos 29-13. Manning finished his career with 71,940 yards and held the record for less than three years when Drew Brees and later Tom Brady passed him. Finally, in 2020, Dustin Johnson won the Masters for the first time in his career, and he did so in record-breaking fashion. Johnson finished the tournament with a score of 268, 20 under par. He was five strokes ahead of Sung Jae Im and Cameron Smith. Johnson came out on the top of the leaderboard among golf legends Tiger Woods and Phil Michelson, as well as Oklahoma State alumnus Ricky Fowler. Week 10 of the, NFL of the NFL season concluded last night as the Washington Commanders stunned the undefeated Philadelphia Eagles in Philly with a 32-21 victory. The Commanders looked like the better team as they forced four turnovers against the Eagles, who only had three total turnovers on the season prior to this game. They controlled the time of possession to falter the Eagles' momentum. After falling behind early, the Commanders scored 13 points in the second quarter, down by a touchdown to give themselves a 20-14 lead heading into the half. The Eagles had a chance to win the game down in 26-21 in the fourth quarter, but Eagles receiver Quez Watkins fumbled the ball away after a 51-yard reception that would have set the Eagles up deep in Washington territory. Taylor Heineke made the start for the Commanders once again for injured veteran Carson Wentz and put together a solid outing passing for 211 yards. Terry McLaurin was Heineke's primary target catching eight passes for 128 yards. Joey Sly had four field goals, two of which were 55 yards or further. Jalen Hurts passed for 175 yards with two touchdowns. After 10 weeks in the NFL, there are no more undefeated teams as the Eagles dropped to 8-1 on the season, as the Commanders now a half a game out of, playoffs, out of a playoff spot at 5-5. Five five. Let's move on to our national headlines. Former Los Angeles Dodgers outfielder Yaziel Puig has pleaded guilty to lying to federal agents about his alleged involvement in an illegal gambling operation. The charge is a felony and carries a maximum sentence of five years in prison. Puig used an illegal gambling website ran by a, name of, by a man named Wayne Nix, placing almost 900 bets over a three-month period in 2019, though it is worth noting that Puig did not bet on baseball games. Authorities say Puig lied several times when questioned by investigators, and they discovered an audio message he sent to an individual, individual in March admitting that he lied to the authorities. Puig, who now plays in Korea, will be sentenced on March 8, 2023. Odell Beckham Jr. is su suing Nike after the, he claimed the dealership 
has not honored his endorsement deal. Beckham claimed Nike has withheld around $20 million and that the way the deal was set up made it nearly impossible for extensions and bonuses. Beckham is looking to cut ties with the company and gain compensation for the alleged $20 million he has missed out on. Los Angeles Rams receiver Cooper Cup will undergo surgery after suffering a high ankle sprain and will be out for at least four weeks on injured reserve. Cup went down with injury late in Sunday's loss to the Cardinals, throwing a huge dent into the Rams' season. Cup has been LA's premier offensive player all year, which has been a struggle for the defending Super Bowl champions. Cup has 75 receptions thus far in the season and has averaged more than 90 yards per game. It's uncertain if Cup will play again this season, as the Rams are 3-6 and six and falling out of playoff contention. For more injury updates around the sports world, be sure to tune into the Daily O for all you need to know. That's going to do it for us today. Make sure to tune back in tomorrow as Aaron Gonders will have you covered on everything you need to know. For the Daily O, I'm Emma Lightfoot. Good night, everyone. Hi, I'm Shauna here at Where the Buffalo Roam in beautiful downtown Pawnee, Oklahoma. We have a lot of beautiful and unique items for sale in the store, but our number one items are Navajo jewelry, Pendleton blankets, and Consuela. It's a great place to shop, a beautiful downtown, so come see us in Pawnee, Oklahoma. A Golf Digest five-star course, best new public course won and open in 1994, and a top 100 public golf course in America since 2003. This course, just five miles outside of Stillwater, Oklahoma on Highway 51, is named after one of the influential golf pioneers this game has known. Karsten Creek. Karsten Creek. Karsten Creek. Karsten Creek. Karsten Creek's a modern golf course. The beauty of the course is in large part to the elements of the grounds. The Joysia fairways transformed from its original forested landscape. Joysia was used to combat the tough winters so golfers could play year-round. The greens are large and sloping bent grass hills. The low-cut bent grass can be similar to glass during peak championship conditions. The bunkers surrounding most holes remind golfers of a white beach rather than a deep hazard. Lake Louise, surrounded by the second nine, completes the perfect finishing hole. The long par 72 course perfectly combines nature with the difficulty of a championship course. Karsten's added challenge is the Oklahoma wind. So uh, there aren't any other schools in the country that have that same commitment to college golf as we do here at Oklahoma State. But if you're gonna play at the highest level, you've gotta be able to, to focus on where you wanna go. And um, Karsten Creek does a good job of, of training you to do that because if you don't, you're gonna have a long day and uh, that's a great uh, legacy that Coach Holder left because that's the way he coached.